just to give a quick introduction, um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, it's another episode of The Scurf Show. Your host, Nick Scurfield. And last week, I had OG Muggs on the show, a friend of George Floyd, who commissioned a mural in George Floyd's memory in Third Ward. Uh, this week, we have the artist who painted that mural, Donkey Boy, Alex Roman Jr. Uh, if you're listening to this later, Alex is a, a good friend, an amazing artist based in Houston, um, who we're fortunate to work with at the Scurfield Group. And we're recording this on Instagram Live. Uh, and if you're catching this later, you can find Alex on Instagram at Donkey Boy. That's D O N K E E B O Y. No, no Y in Donkey. Uh, and he's got merch at DonkeyBoy.com. Um, you've probably seen his murals at Minute Maid Park for the Houston Astros, Shipley Donuts, Eighth Wonder Brewery, all over Houston. Uh, really excited to have you on today, Alex, and, and get to talk to you about your background and how you got to where you are today, man. So thanks for coming. Thank you for having me, dude. Yeah, ab absolutely, man. I, I know you've been staying busy. Um, I definitely want to talk to you about that George Floyd mural uh, that you painted in the Third Ward uh, during this interview. I know we're going to get a chance to see some of your art that you have there at your at your place as well, uh, which I'm excited to talk about and talk about your style as an artist. Um, and, and if you're listening, uh, you can subscribe to our podcast on The Scurf Show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and we'll post this full episode to YouTube and IGTV as well. Um, so Alex, before we dive into your background, how you got to where you are today, and look at some of your art, um, first of all, just how have you been doing during this whole pandemic during COVID-19? Uh, you know, I've been good, man. I've been healthy. And to me, that's the most important part. Uh, my mom's healthy. My family's healthy. So, you know, work has been up and down, you know, but uh, I, I can't really complain too much because, you know, I got people like you that are on my team and Dave and Saf and everybody and and uh you know we were we fi definitely figured out some ways to keep the work coming uh but it's it's been a it's been a weird time uh you know I'm, I'm i love having events and i love curating art shows and unfortunately right now we can't do any of that stuff so it's taken some uh some adjustment but you know just hanging in there and, and trying to stay healthy yeah. For those of you who are watching on Instagram Live, uh, if you have questions for Donkey Boy, um, send them in, please, and we'll try and get to them um, throughout the course of the interview. We want this to be interactive as much as possible. Um, Alex, I guess a good place to start with this conversation would be a question I know you get a lot, but uh, the name Donkey Boy, where does that come from? Uh, yeah, so that... Um... That comes from from my childhood. Uh, some kids like used to make fun of me, and pretty much all my friends that I, that I mentioned that I wanted to be an artist were like hating on me. They were like, "You're not gonna make it as an artist." And uh, you know, where I was from, a lot of people call me burro, you know, which means donkey in Spanish. And they said that I wouldn't, I couldn't, I didn't have what it takes to make it as an artist. So I just took that and and uh, and, and uh, you know, I put a spin on it and. And it turned a negative into a positive, and, and um, it's kind of like my own way of, of having a message where you, you know you, you shouldn't doubt people. You know, um, like anybody has a chance to do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love that. And I've heard you talk about how you know donkeys. If you you research them, they're very loyal. Uh, they're very hardworking. You know, and I think yeah. the qualities that, that you have, without a doubt. Uh, you're and. You know, I, I know you, um, you call yourself a, a remixer of pop culture in terms of your artistic style. Um, what does that mean? So, I li you know, I like to play with, with uh, pop art. You know, I'll take something from my childhood and I'll mix it with something else. And, and in the end, you get this blend, like, you know, uh, what I call a remix. So I, I just like presenting things that already exist in a new way, in, in a new light. Um, to me, it's all about connecting the dots and if I could create a conversation amongst the viewers uh, then I did my part you've got um some of your art at home right I'd love to to show some of that and kind of get an I don't, I, you know I don't have too much of my my own stuff you know uh, I like to to collect other people's uh, art but I, I have I have some some stuff that I can show you uh, yeah. it's not a lot but yeah I would love to see the um 
I know you have that uh, Picasso one, which is one of your signature pieces. Yeah, uh, so that one, how do I flip this? Right, so this is uh, Tupac and Picasso, and it's called Picasso. The, uh, the first time I showed this piece was at Art Basel, and geez, I couldn't tell you what year that was, but it was a while, it was a while back. Um, and it was really dope, man. Like, uh, I think Tretch from Naughty by Nature showed up to the show and a, a bunch of people showed up to that show, man. It was really, really dope. But this is definitely one that, uh, to me, it just, I don't know, you know, I love this piece and, and, and I know it's weird because I made it, but, uh, I just love this piece, man, so much. And, and this is actually a print that's on aluminum. Uh, the original sold a long time ago. And um, and so this is a piece, piece that's definitely uh, dear to my heart. And I created a sculpture of this. And DJ Eddie F owns that now. And DJ Eddie F was, I believe, the only person to have produced a song with Biggie and Pac. So it was Biggie, Pac, Grand Puba, and Heavy D. Uh, he also founded Heavy D and the Boys. He he owns uh, that sculpture. Mm. Yeah, it's just crazy, man. You know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know a lot of your work. I mean, I think all of your work is awesome, and uh, it doesn't seem weird to me that you would have it there. But is that weird for artists to carry their own stuff? I mean, I don't know. You know, kind of. It, it, it's in a weird way. I feel like when I create something and and it's out there in the world that I, I don't really feel like it's mine anymore. Uh, you kind of, I, I, at least for myself, I kind of disconnect from it because so many people get to see it and comment and, and do whatever they want with it. So, but to me, it's, it's just like, it was, uh, it gave me like a certain feeling that I accomplished something. Um, so I think that's why I like keeping it around. Yeah. I also, yeah, I have a painting of yours somewhere a small version it's a mural you did at fm kitchen in houston uh which is i think it was called the little altuve that could is that what you called the paint? yeah yeah it was the little engine that could with jose yeah. Altuve's face on the train uh, which you did after the astros won the world series but i love the way you do those you know you kind of have those visual puns and double entendre in a lot of your work um the the wonder frida one i think is another one of yours that um has become a, a really well-known mural that you, mural that you have on the East End. You have something of that at, at your place as well, right? Yeah. So I got I got a print. Um, like I said, I don't have too much of my own stuff. So this is a print that I that I have. Um, and so this is Wonder Frida. It's uh, Frida Kahlo mixed with Wonder Woman, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually the first mural that I like that I painted here. Uh, like out in the street where everybody could just come look at it. And that was via Gonzo uh, during the first Hue Fest that, uh, that they threw. Yeah, so shout out to Gonzo, man, for, uh, for allowing me to do that. And can you talk about the Rita Kahlo and, and Wonder Woman connection there? Well, so to me, like, you know, my, my mom, you know, being a wife, uh, a mother, uh, an artist, I mean, I've, I've seen her just wear many, many hats, you know, and and I always just looked up to her and, and I, I, in my eyes, she's like a super strong woman. And I think Frida Kahlo is one of the most, uh, I mean, she, she's, she's fearless. You know, she was fearless. She wasn't scared to speak her mind and, and do what, what, what she wanted to do. And Wonder Woman, obviously uh, she's a superhero. So I, I just wanted to connect that and I wanted to promote uh, female empowerment and that that's where this uh piece stemmed from and it's really it's really cool because like if you look if you really dig uh wonder woman and superman you know they they wanted to be together but they couldn't they were both uh really big entities by themselves so they were better off as like partners in crime but not really lovers which is kind of similar to Frida Kahlo and her husband, Diego Rivera. They, they, they really didn't work well together as lovers. So they kind of just became like art partners, you know, and, and uh, 
So there's some connection there as well. That's great, man. Um, we got, I got to ask you about, uh, about your mom. Um, while we're on the subject, we had a uh, heavy metal racket. Our friend Oscar Ramirez just commented and, and said, mama is the best. Um, your mom, donkey mom uh, is an artist in her own right. Um, can you, um, just tell people a little bit about her. Uh, I mean, she just, I mean, she's my hero, man. Uh, I just, you know, I want to be like her. And uh, I just strive to have, like, passion like she does. And the way she's just, she's just fair. And and she's a very loving and giving person. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, I, I try to learn that from her and take that in. And, you know, there'll be certain times where I'm frustrated with a job or a mural. And she's kind of just like, hey, you know, just the time's going to pass anyway. Just keep working at it don't get frustrated and she's just dope man all around and uh i mean she gave up her dream of being an artist to raise me and my brother uh and i mean that's that's a lot you know what i mean so that's a lot for somebody to give up and and now it's just awesome that we're able to work together and share these memories and it's super dope man Great, man. I love that. Um, we have a comment from Jay Garcia Jr. It says, hey, Donkey Boy, I won the smaller Wonder Woman Frida painting uh, on a small wooden piece of the school fundraiser and gave it to his mother for Mother's Day last year. Um, wow. Glad he my idea is you and gifting it. So, cool. Um, yeah, I, so I want to get into your background a little bit, Alex, before um, before we talk about some more of your art. Um, and, and there's a lot of your art I want to talk about. Um, and some of the collaborations you've done with people like Slim Thug, um, the UFC, the Astros, things like that. Um, but before we get to all that, um, you know, just more on, on how you got to where you are today. Um, you were born in Houston, and then you moved to Mexico when you were a young child. Can you just tell people a little bit about your upbringing? Yes, yeah, so uh, I was born here. The first house that uh, my parents had was in the East End. Uh, in the second ward and um at 40 days uh you know we had to go to mexico and my, my dad stayed here working uh but my mom my brother who passed away already uh and my mom we moved to mexico and we were out there for seven years then we came back to houston and uh just been here man and and, and working and i did the whole la thing i was like i gotta move to la to be an artist and I uh, came back and, um, and, you know, I just, it just made me appreciate the city of Houston much more and, you know, not to knock on LA or anything, but it just wasn't for me. And, and uh, that Houston vibe was, was what I wanted. And, and I just wanted to stay here and be able to work here and, uh, and build here. And, and now I'm able to do that. And it's, it's a blessing. So how did, how did you get into art when you were a kid? My mom, you know, just looking at my mom and my mom would, would buy me uh, coloring books and and crayons and, and all that stuff. And, and I always had something to to draw on. And, and I, I just loved looking at her paintings uh, when we were in Mexico and we would go visit my aunt's house and my aunt would have a bunch of her paintings and cousins and all that. So uh, everywhere I went, I was surrounded by my mom's artwork. And, uh, you know, I was just heavily inspired by that. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to do that, so. I've heard you tell a story before too of, uh, what was it, you were six years old and you won a big a big competition in Mexico, is that right? Yeah, I was six years old and my mom entered me in this uh, this huge contest and uh, and I won it, you know? And, and I mean, imagine being, being six years old and you win something like that, my head blew up and I was like, oh my gosh, like this, I'm an artist, you know what I mean? And, uh, and that was it for me. I mean, I just, you know, took it very seriously at the age of 13 is when I started getting commissioned and getting paid to do certain things. And, uh, I just been rocking ever since, you know, got a comment from Chelsea Payton who said Houston is uh, better than LA all day. Uh, Heavy Metal Racket said H-Town is where it's at. Donkey Boy, should everyone hear that you can be a bad motherfucker out this city? 
Uh, amen to that. Amen to both those comments. Um, man, I, lo I love Oscar, man. He's, he's, a, he's a dope human being, and, uh, and he, he's doing a lot here, too. Yeah, we had Oscar on the, on the podcast um, a few weeks ago, Heavy Metal Racket. They're doing great stuff. Uh, man, I had my Houston mask on me earlier. Oh, I think I still got it. Yeah, here we go. Got it in the pocket. The Shout out to Oscar and Heavy Metal Racket. Love these things. Hope you're wearing your mask at home, by the way. Um, I am, dude. I, bought, I got like four of those from Oscar, and, uh, and they're all missing, man. Every time somebody rides in the car with me, they, I feel like they take one of my masks. So. <laughs> I feel like stealing a mask is wrong on, on multiple levels. It's probably not. Right. I hope they watch it first. Yeah. Uh, Ika's creation said, I love what you do in Houston. Um, oh, thank you. We had, um, we have some other comments here. We'll read in a little bit, but uh, Ryan Hildebrand, chef Ryan just joined from FM kitchen. Hey Ryan, we were just talking about you. Um, and heavy metal racket said he has more masks for you, bro. So he can thank hook you. you. Um, <laughs> But so when you came back to Houston, you talked about how people doubted you, didn't think you could be an artist. Um, what was that like in middle school? You, and you went to is Milby High School, right? Yeah, I went to Sanchez Elementary, then I went to Dee Dee Middle School, and then uh, Milby High School. And, uh, and what was that like going through school? Uh, like, how were you finding an outlet to pursue your, your passion for art at that age? I mean, at, at that time, uh, especially during middle school, uh, you know, we would we would all get like the lowrider. Um, sorry, I had a call come in. We had the lowrider art magazines, and um, and we I just drew whatever I saw in those magazines. I would draw the cars and all that stuff, and and uh, and that's how I kept it going. And I would draw my friends. I would make. Uh, characters out of my friends and uh just it was an everyday thing to me it was a way to escape like if i had any problems or issues like i'd, I'd go home lock myself in my room and just draw and and mm -hmm. that was like my therapy um and as, as i got older and older and i just people were like i was known for that i was known to be the kid in school that was drawing like if somebody wanted to to gift something for Mother's Day to their mom or Father's Day to their dad, they, they would they would pay me like forty dollars, fifty dollars, and you know. But back then, like forty, fifty dollars for a drawing, like I mean, it was it was good, you know. Like I would do like four drawings a week, and like you know, I was a kid and I had some money in my pocket, and I was like, okay. But I, as much as I knew that I was going to be an artist and that this was gonna be my career path, I didn't take it seriously until after high school. Mm -hmm. uh, after high school, I, um, I joined AmeriCorps, uh, which was a, a, a program that was uh, in collaboration with Youth Advocates. Youth Advocates was a space that, that I went to uh, back in like my b-boy days, it was a long, many, many moons ago. Uh, but I started working with kids and uh, I was a mentor, a teacher aide, and I helped run an after-school program. And that's when uh, I, I just, I felt like I needed to take it more seriously uh, mm -hmm. because I, I, I could see the impact that art had on these kids. These kids didn't respect me until they knew that I could, I could paint, you know? Huh. And when, when they saw me paint, they were like, okay, well, well, he's cool. So we're going to listen to him, you know? And so I really started noticing the, the power of art. Mm. Yeah. You've told me before about how, um, I don't know if it was this job you were talking about, but I think you would have a pattern of you'd take a job and you'd work there for like a month or two months or three months, basically till you got enough money to where you could buy more art supplies and then, and paint and then you'd quit the job. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did that a lot. You know, uh, it wasn't with this job, that job, I was only able to do it for two years uh, mm -hmm. because it was a program and it ended after two years. But yeah, I, I mean, I've done construction. I've done, I mean, I've worked uh, all over the place, you know, and, uh, and I just couldn't, I don't know, you know, I couldn't, uh, it, 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 I, like I hated it because I knew that I could be doing something that I love doing and I had to take the risk for it. And, uh, 
eventually I did. I took the risk and you know I quit all the jobs I had and I was like I'm just gonna I'm gonna go for it, you know. Mm. Yeah. Again, I want to thank everybody who's joining on on Instagram Live, and if you're listening to this later, uh, you can find Alex on Instagram at Donkey Boy. Uh, his website is donkeyboy.com. He's got merch, prints, uh, t-shirts, all kind of good stuff. Um, and um, we're getting some comments on here from people, just lots of uh, emojis uh, in the affirmative. Just I think people are enjoying what you're saying, Alex. Um, you know, I I think um, one thing that's interesting, you know, you have a studio on the east side of east end of Houston. Um, I know that's kind of where you live. You're the resident artist at Eighth Wonder Brewery. And um, really, the, the East End seems like, in terms of the Houston art scene, it seems like that's where so much of it is. Um, you know, I think anybody who lives in Houston, um, you know, has seen all the murals on the East End. Um, what do you think about the Houston art scene in general from where it is now to from compared to what it was when you were first getting started? Well, the, the way I remember it, and, and, you know, hence the reason why I moved to, to Los Angeles was I couldn't make it as an artist. Um, you know, I had uh, I had my own nights at, at certain clubs like Jet Lounge, and I had had a bunch of things going on. I would do art shows like every weekend, and uh, I just you know I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. And um, that's you know that was my experience. And when I finally uh, decided to move. You know, I would come visit. I would I would stay in, in Houston for like two, three months every time I came. And then I would dip to L.A. for a year and then come back again. And as I kept visiting, I kept noticing that that something was different. You know, like the, the same guys that I was having art shows with back in the day. I mean, they were like quitting their jobs and they, and they were becoming full time artists. Mm. And I was like, yo, I, I mean, that's that's what I want. You know, I want to do that here in Houston. I, I didn't want to do that in L.A. I wanted to do it here and um finally you know when the the day i decided to move back i'm like you know what i'm gonna try this for like a whole year and i'm really really gonna try to make something happen for myself here uh and now the art scene is just booming man it's just there's a lot of a lot of people a lot of artists that contribute to that uh the more that us artists keep doing and keep building I mean, we're just building it up for the next generation, you know. The next generation hopefully already has some kind of infrastructure ready for them and, and a blueprint, right? So uh, it, it's definitely booming right now, and we got to keep it going and, and keep growing it. Mm. Well, on that note, um, you have a question from uh, Tika's Creations on Instagram Live that is uh, about what advice you have for young artists. And, and, uh, and on that subject, I do want to uh, just mention that um, one thing I think is great that you've been doing, I, I know you've been teaching classes um, to young art students uh, at the Break Free Hip Hop School recently. Um, could you maybe talk about that a little bit along with um, what advice do you have for young art and, and what are you you know, telling kids that, that ask you the same type of question? Yeah, I think uh, for, for young artists, you just, you just got to get in the mix. You know, you're, you're going to have doubts. You're going to go through all those moments and all those feelings and and it's all part of you growing as an artist. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm older now and I'm still growing so we can all continue to grow. But you got to get out there. You, you got to create. You got to put your stuff out there. You got to reach out to people. Uh, ask how you can help. Maybe you could get into some kind of internship. Uh, you know, just offer your services and, and in return gain some knowledge you know that's that's what i did when i started painting murals and i didn't really know what materials to use you know i i started working for somebody and i was somebody's assistant for like six or eight months and mm. uh, i was you know i didn't really get paid but eventually i noticed that i was doing all the work and not getting anything so then i realized i'm like okay well i'm ready to to do this on my own and uh meet people and, and it's so easy now because you can reach out to people via instagram or facebook whatever that is um join art shows you got to do all of that that all that stuff is just gonna gonna help you um and the more you do that and the more that you can accept that hey not everybody's gonna like your art you know it, it, some people are some people aren't 
but as long as they look at it and as long as you can make them remember it, then, then you're doing something with that. And that's something that I, I tell my students at Break Free, like, you got to keep going. You know, you just, you're going to mess up. You're going to mess up plenty of times. But you know what? It's just paint and you can paint over it and over it until you until you're done with it. Uh, there's a famous quote that says, uh, art is never finished. It's only abandoned. Right. And, and it's so true. Like you decide when you're done with something. Right. I love that, man. Um, Hidalgo HTX is so true. Um, and seeing a lot of other people join here as well. Again, thank you for tuning in here on Instagram Live. Uh, really happy to be talking with Donkey Boy, uh, amazing artist based here in Houston. And um, we've been going into your background a little bit. Uh, Tika's Creation said, cool, cool, thank you um, for that answer. So I wanted to ask you, Alex, about um, some of the collaborations that you've done. Uh, I mentioned some at the beginning um, and some of the people you've collaborated with or, or done things with and interacted with. Um, and I just, I've got a list of them that I was just going to start running, running through. Um, a big one uh, that is timely right now, because uh, Major League Baseball just announced they're coming back uh, for this, this season. The last two years, you've done murals at Minute Maid Park for the Astros. Um, and if you're in Houston, you've been to any games, I'm sure you've seen these in left center field. Um, this last year was, uh, it was like the Bregman, the, the stair, whatever that's called, right? Oh, yeah all the players before that was the Astros logo but big picture spot um, out in left center field inside the stadium in Minute Maid Park how did that come about and uh, can you talk about what that was like to be able to do that for the Astros I um, mean that was that was that was such a cool experience uh, you know because I mean who doesn't know the Astros man you know what I mean and to be and regardless of what I say about the Astros right now too <laughs> yeah for sure you know uh but it, it was just super cool. Uh, that came through Dave, you know, uh, David Anderson, my manager. Uh, he said somebody was interested in, in me possibly doing a mural there. And I mean, I was like, yo, what do you mean? Like, for real? And he was like, yeah. And, and uh, you know, we did it the first time, my mom and I, and, and we worked with uh, students from uh, the Art Institute, which was super dope. I think it's a super cool program that the Astros have. Um, and then we got to do it again. The, the second year and both times it's just been amazing uh again the, like the more eyes that you can get on your art the the, the better it is for an artist uh mm -hmm. and i was just so proud that i mean that that i was able to do that and and i was able to create something with them and going to the to the stadium and and uh going to the ballpark and and it being empty, you know, and we were the only ones there. You know, I'm sure there was other people there working, but it felt like we were we. It was our field in a way, you know. I even I even went down there on the field one night. And so one of the guards was like, "Hey, yo, you can't do that." I'm like, All right, "I just wanted to touch it," you know. But uh, <laughs> it was just such a cool feeling. Like I'll never forget that, and um, I'm super proud that, that we got it. And we were able to do that. Yeah, I, I, we went to a game, you and I, one time, and I remember we walked by the mural, and it, it was so cool, I feel like, to to see you looking at that, and then you'd see all these people stopping and taking pictures, and so, you know, somebody stops saying, hey, aren't you Donkey Boy? Which you can usually tell by the hat you're wearing. Are you, do you have a Donkey yeah. Boy? I, I do, man. Uh, Noak, shout out to Noak. He made this for me. Uh, gave it to me, I think, on my birthday. Uh, and Noak is an awesome artist and an awesome friend. Um uh, but yeah, I usually I usually wear uh, my name on my hat. It's like a to me, it's like a b boy thing. Like, you know, back then, like if you were in a crew, you wore your crew shirt and you wore your your b boy name in the back and and all that. So uh, that's kind of where that comes from. The the more I get to know you, the more I learn that you have some some really interesting friends, um, sort of from all walks of life. And on the b boy subject, one, one of your good friends. B boy Moy, who's a, a world famous B boy dancer, what's the what's the story on your B boy days? We got to hear that a little bit. You know what, man? Uh, you look at me now, and you 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 couldn't uh, picture me doing that. But uh, I was pretty good. I was pretty solid, um, and I got to a certain level, and then it just it was kind of like, all right, I gotta choose. Am I gonna continue this path? Or, or am I going to be an artist? Like, which one am I going to commit to? 
uh, and you know the b boy thing was definitely like hard on on my body, and you know a lot of a lot of the cats that were doing it were just elevating like moy and and so many others uh and I was like, yo, I don't even think I could keep up with that anymore, so I'm just gonna go go another route you know i I knew I was always gonna be an artist i just I just fought it, I fought it so much, you know yeah, I know um another big collaboration that you did recently was with ufc um through through dana white um the president of ufc was at one of our favorite restaurants uh riel and um you ended up doing a mural for them to announce a, a fight in houston can you um can you talk through that a little bit yeah that came via uh mick maynard so uh mick maynard is a really good friend of mine super awesome guy he's uh the matchmaker at uh at ufc and i met mick through Josh Hill, Josh Hill, uh, he's a judge now, but he uh, used to be my MMA coach, uh, and he was uh, my jujitsu guy and wrestling guy, and uh, uh, an amazing person, amazing human being. He's, he's also a very good friend of mine. So that's how I met Mick. And, and uh, what you what you get up to? A green belt? Is that right? No, no, no. So I, I was up to uh, you know, there's white belt and then there's blue belt. I got I got up to blue belt. Green even and I was uh, about to get my uh, green as a Power Rangers. Oh, <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> but I was about to get my purple belt, and then I busted some ribs, and I was out for like five months. And um, and again, you know, here I am having to decide. All right, what which one am I going to commit to? Uh, and I think it was a sign, you know, like just you got to just really stick to this art thing and and uh, stop stop doing so many things, you know. Mm. Well, and so, um, so through Mick, then how did the um, the UFC mural come about? Well, I met I met Dana White at uh, at Riel, uh, you know, and I'm a huge fan of the sport, you know, and so I was definitely like fanboying, and, and I was like, hey, uh, you know, nice to meet you, and, and he was like, yeah, Mick told me about you, man. Can you show me some of your art? And I was like, for real? And I was like, all right. And so I put on my phone and. He was like, man, I love what you do, man. Keep doing it, blah, blah, blah. I didn't think much of it. And then uh, Mick hit me up, and he was like, yo, you should do something, man, you know, for the next UFC that's coming to town. I was like, Shh. I drew up some sketches real quick, and uh, and I sent them to Mick, and he sent them to Dana White, and, and that's how that whole thing came about, and, and uh, we were able to do it. Man, and that's over on the East End at your studio. Yeah. Uh, out of it. Um our old friend Mike McCarthy just complimented me on this shirt. Said he needs one. Uh, is this my like go-to donkey shirt? I wear these for important meetings sometimes. I think you should, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was symbolic for today. Thanks, Mike. Uh, hope you're well, buddy. And uh, I got this shirt at a, I think Buffalo Exchange in Montrose, which is no longer there. Um, but man, um, speaking of some of these other collaborations, um, you've done murals at Shipley Donuts. Um, you've got. Um, as we said, you've been the resident artist at Eighth Wonder Brewery for um, how many years now? Um, and a big one um, along the lines of Eighth Wonder Brewery, uh, this weekend coming up is uh, Screw Day, June 27th in Houston. And one of my favorite pieces of yours is the, the DJ Screw piece that's made out of, is it 4,379 screws? Did I get that right? Yeah, somewhere, somewhere up there, almost, almost 5,000 screws, yeah. Man, and but you've also not only done that those pieces, but you've done an event at Eighth Wonder every year um, with the family of DJ Screw. Can you talk about that? So I, it all it all stems from that piece, right? When I when I made that piece, uh, I I couldn't even believe I came up with that piece. Like that that's I don't even know how that happened, right? But somehow I got the idea, and I was like, I can't believe nobody's done this with DJ Screw, right? And so. Um, when I, I made the piece, I, I attempted to do it once at Eight Wonder. And I remember, uh, I don't know if it was National Geographic or I don't, I don't, I don't know who was there filming something, uh, but it did not go well. It, it, it was so bad, right? It, and my, uh, my drill, like it just, it, it welded the bit that was in the drill because I was using it so much. So it got, it, it, it like welded together and I couldn't do anything with it anymore. And, um, and so it was, a, it was not good, but I, I tried it again for the second time. And that's when, when, uh, when I was able to do it. Um, 
and his family reached out. I mean, when I, when I did that, everybody reached out, like Slim and Paul, and, and, and it was so dope, man, to, to get love from everybody like that. And if you're not from Houston, you're talking about rapper Slim Thug and Paul Wall. Yeah, and, and, uh, and Screw Sister reached out, and they were like, hey, we want to talk to you. And, and I was like, all right, you know? Uh, and so we got on the phone and and we were they were like we want to meet you and we want to see if we can do something together and I was like yo this is this is dope like it's amazing uh, and I I got with uh, Ryan Soroka at Eighth Wonder and uh, and we were able to to come up with an event and and now we do it annually and and I think we're going on the fifth or sixth one already I don't even know I think fifth one. Uh, and the first event, a lot of the money that was raised was used to, to I mean, it was donated uh, to help uh, build his tombstone, to give him a proper tombstone. And so, I mean, it's just, this has been an honor, man. Like, I mean, it's, it's such a, a big thing. I remember when, when I was in high school, like, I would go to, over to my buddy Jacob's house and we had Walkmans and we would just, like, be in his room and he had all the screw tapes. So, like, he was always getting screw tapes. So we would just go there and just jam out, you know, and, and uh, it's just super awesome to be able to, to be part of something like that. You see a lot of um, hip hop influence. Uh, by the way, uh, Ryan Lashane from Riel just joined Instagram Live, which can only yeah, mean. Dude. Uh, hey, Ryan. Trouble. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you see a lot of hip hop influence in, in your art. Um, you know, the, the music correlation. I know you, you played in a, a band, you said briefly in high school, right? uh yeah a little <laughs> kind of like yeah. you're playing garage and stuff but but seriously with the the dj screw and then you have some notorious big pieces uh the not from houston but i rap a lot the picasso you showed earlier the tupac and picasso mashup um and then also um the, the thing you did with slim thug um that one of my favorites is the uh i'm gonna pronounce this wrong but was it the basquiat that what you did that um yeah 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 basquiat yeah there it is yep tell me about that so uh it's uh again you know like i'm a remixer uh and so i i did uh a piece for slim it's basquiat b-o-s-s because he's you know he's a boss hog and he's got the boss life thing going on and so uh it, it was just a, a blend of of him and basquiat because to me, like pairing two great artists like that, it's just, I think it's cool, you know? Um, but I did, I did that and I actually got something coming for him that he doesn't know about. Okay. Mm. Looking forward to seeing that. I mean, how, how like, I mean, how cool is that for you to be able to, to meet these guys, you know, and do art with these guys or for these guys, people that you said you grew up listening to, you know, like, like DJ Screw. Man, it's uh, it, it's surreal, you know. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, like I geek out, you know, because I'm like, yeah, man, that, like I can't, like I'll get in my car and I'm I'm already listening to your music, and then now I get to meet you at an event and, and you actually know my name, like it, it's just it's super dope, man. It, and uh, I definitely don't don't take it for granted, and uh, I know that now I'm in a spot where I have a responsibility and. Uh, you know, not only do I have to keep making art, but I have to keep making art at a higher level and and passing it on and passing on uh, whatever information I, uh, that, that I've gained. Well, along those lines, um, I wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about the, the George Floyd mural that you just did um, over in the Third Ward. Um, and that was, for, for anyone who hasn't seen it, um, it's over at 3341 Winburn Street in, in the heart of Third Ward, Houston, which is where George Floyd grew up um alex you did that i think it was two days a couple days after he was killed um and his good friend og mugs commissioned that and it got attention all over the world cnn uh bbc german public television um can you just um kind of go through take us through the process of, of how that all came about so uh my mom and i we were working uh on a mural for fluff fluff big bar our good friend Rebecca, she she owns uh, that place, which is amazing. Y'all gotta check it out. Um, so we we had just finished wrapping up for the day, and um, 
I had, you know, I was dropping my mom off at her house and on the way there, I was telling her, I'm like, man, I can't wait to drop you off. I'm going to go home. I'm going to soak in some Epsom salt, you know, cause my back, my back was hurting, you know? And, uh, and right when we were uh, about to drop her off, uh, I read this IG message, uh, DM, and it was from OG Muggs. And uh, he was like, yo, wh what would it take for you to come out and do a George Floyd piece here in the Third Ward? You know, I'm a good friend. I was a good friend of his. And uh, I mean, I was like, oh, snap, you know? Um, and I knew that that the, the, the march was gonna happen that same week, so I was like, man, I gotta do this fast, you know? So I, I told my mom about it and my mom was like, well, I mean, you know, unload the car and, and pack up the new paint and, and let's let's go, uh, let's get on, on, on the computer and start uh, drawing and, and, and we're gonna have to go do this right now. So take like a 30 minute break and, and, and let's get this drawing done and let's get out there. So, uh, uh, you know, I thank God that my mom's a G like that because um, she definitely like made me not even question it. She was like, you know, I don't know what you're thinking about. We're gonna have to go do this right now. And so then we went, you know, we drew it up uh, and we, we headed to Third Ward, uh, which is about like 35, 40 minutes from where my mom stays. And so um, we were there till like one in the morning that, that, that day. And, and it was crazy, man, because OG Mugs and, and all the people that, that were there the, the way they received us, it, it was just, it was just amazing, man. Like they, they made sure that this thing was going to get done and it was going to get done right. Anything we needed, they, they literally like blocked off the whole street and, uh, and it was, it was work time. And, and, and as soon as we finished, uh, they all started clapping, which was unreal, man. Like it's just that, that's an experience that, uh, that, I'm never going to forget. Yeah, I, I was talking to Dave Anderson uh, throughout the night when you were over there. He was over there with you, and he was saying there were like 30, 40, 50 people out there the whole time um, telling stories and basically having a party and cheering you guys on. What was that like? Man, I mean, it was the first time that that I was emotional while I was painting. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, you know, I wish I didn't have to paint that. Um, you know, and, but, you know, every time I turned around from, from my ladder and, and I saw people and, and, and how important it was, uh, it just motivated me to keep going. And, and, uh, there was a few times, man, where I'm not gonna lie to you. I was like, yo, this is heavy. Like, this is real heavy. Uh, but it was, it was just something special, man. And to see people come together like that and, you know, during this time, man, like, you know, with the COVID and all that, my, my mom was really not going out at all. And she was like, man, I don't care. Let's go do this. Like, we, we really put all that aside. And uh, I believe that 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 it was something that that, that God had, had put for us to do. And and, uh, and we just went out and, and did it. Hmm. Yeah. And I know you had a lot of people coming up and, and telling you memories of George Floyd and things like that. Um didn't you get a like a FaceTime with somebody with Steven Jackson, the NBA player? Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I was able to talk uh, to Steven Jackson through FaceTime, and that was, again, man, it was just uh, the whole thing was just it was wild. It was it was uh, unreal. Mm. Well, and we're getting a lot of love for Donkey Mom in the comments here, uh, rightfully so. Um, she's awesome, and um, you can go see that mural uh, if you're in Houston again, over in the Third Ward. It's right by where he grew up, George Floyd. It's right by Jack Yates High School. Uh, what's been the the feedback, you know, since then um, in terms of just what you've heard from people and uh, about the mural and Gordon's Alex? Uh, you know, it's been all positive. And, uh, uh, you know, one, one comment that, that I read that really stuck with me was, you know, from this guy. And he was like, hey, man, you really blessed the hood with this one. And... Mm -hmm. And that, that was super cool because, um, you know, because it's, it, again, it's, it's, a, it's such a weird thing to, to talk about and to have painted. But um, now there's a lot of light that, that, that's, that's shining on Third Ward. And so now it's about, like, what, what happens next? You know, what's, what's going to, how, how are we going to grow from this? 
uh, and, and keep coming together and stay together. Um, but it, it's definitely all been positive, man, and all love. And, and I think you mentioned this is important to you, important moment for you, right, in terms of, you know, kind of recognize, helping you to recognize the importance of, um, of speaking out, at, you know, in support of Black Lives Matter, right? For sure. For sure, man. You got you got to you got to speak up, man. Right now, it's it's not a. If you're not speaking up, it's it's kind of like you're part of the problem, you know. Absolutely. Um, I want to get a little talk a little more about your mom. We we mentioned earlier that's you know she taught you how to draw. Um, you learned from her. She was an artist when you were growing up. Um, and mom is at Donkey Mom on Instagram. Uh, if you're listening, um, but you guys have painted what like thirty. 30 something murals now together over the last 10, 12 years. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, yeah, it's been wild, man. It's been, uh, it's been really cool. Uh, and you know, we're going out to Marfa next. So, uh, we're going to go out there and, and, uh, paint something for our, for our friends, uh, restaurant. And, and we're excited to, to go do that. But we've, we've, yeah, it's, it's been really cool, man. Really, really cool. What's it like, uh, working, with your mom well look man to be honest like at first she was like nope we're not doing that we're not doing it you know it was like she knew what she wanted to do and, and i kind of sometimes i didn't agree i didn't agree and, and uh she was like what you want to tell me something and i'm like uh oh kind of you know I'm, I'm like i know you're my mom but can we try this this way and she was like all right let's try it that way and at first it was it was a little weird um, because she's my mom, you know, I'm not going to be telling my mom what to do. Um, but, but, you know, it just, that, that only lasted for like a few months and then, uh, and, and our groove and our rhythm was just, oh man, like, you know, I learned so much from her. Uh, every time there is a project, I learned something from her and, um, it's, it's unreal, man. Like, like I get to go out and do this stuff with my mom. Like it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's it's very interesting, and I hope that you know it'll inspire other people to work together with their families. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned you're going to Marfa. Yep. In July, which will be really exciting to see. Um, what else is next for you? Um, man, we got a we got a few projects lined up. Um, I can't really talk about them that much, you know, but. Uh, um, we have some things that, yeah, that, 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 that we're working on and, and some personal paintings that, 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 uh, I have time right now to work on and, and yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll see what happens, you know? What are, what are some goals of yours as an artist, uh, you know, looking ahead, you know, the next couple of years or, or beyond that even? Um, hopefully I get to travel more and, 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 and spread my art, uh, through different places. Um, you know, we were planning a show in Chicago uh, before all this happened. So uh, hopefully we get to go and do that. My, my mom was born in Chicago. Uh, so hopefully we, we, we get to do that again. And, you know, we always go to Art Basel. We always go to Miami every year. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going <laughs> to turn out this year. But, um, right. yeah, just continue to travel and, 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 and hopefully uh, – curate more art shows and, and try to create opportunities for other people as well. Yeah. The donkey, um, the donkey show was something you did last year in Houston. First time you had your own show with you and your mom, which, which went great. And I know we were, we were planning on doing that again. So hopefully we can bring that back. But, but I love what you're talking about supporting other artists. Um, you know, for anyone who's seen the, the be someone sign on the freeway, in Houston, I know that artist be someone is a good friend of yours. Um, I know you're you're friendly with Gonzo and you know Noke. You mentioned um, a, a lot of other artists in Houston, and you know one thing at Eighth Wonder, you do those shows that are free art shows um, where you have artists come. You don't take any commission. You're just there supporting their art. Um, you know, hopefully, I guess we got to figure out the next way to do that with COVID happening, but. Yeah, man. Once once this is done, uh, and we're gonna do way more of those, man, because uh, I I feel like I didn't do enough of that, and uh, hopefully we get to do it once a month. Um, I'm excited to to get back to that. Why why is that important to you, Alex? To 
to show so much support to your fellow artists like that? Well, I remember when you, when I didn't have anywhere to go and, and I didn't have a place to show my art. And that, that wasn't a good feeling. You know, here I was stuck at home with all these paintings and just investing money into my art supplies. And uh, it, it wasn't a good feeling. So uh, now that I'm able to do that and, and I've made some connections and, and, you know, I have some kind of pool, like I felt that that was important for me to do and, and not only show, but show at a place where people come together and support art and support the culture. Uh, and then you're showing with some, some people that are pretty seasoned and, and there's no, I mean, we don't take any commission, you know, like we don't take any kind of percentage. And uh, I mean, I know what it's like to, to be a young artist and, and have no money in your pockets because all the money you do have, you're spending on your art supplies. You know, and so, uh, you know, that it's very important. Like I said, I, I want to leave my mark uh, on the next generation. And I, I want to be one of the guys that help build this. Awesome, man. Uh, I wanted to ask to see one more piece of art you got. Last question. The, uh, the, the Never Skip a Beat piece that you have there. Could you just um, show people that and um, explain what's behind that one? Because that's one of my favorite pieces that you've done. Yep, this is it, man. I uh, I made this uh, when I moved to Cali. I moved to California, and uh, I was out there. And, and I'm gonna be honest, man. I think this is like one of the ugliest things I've ever made. Uh, but <laughs> at the time, I did. You know, I was like, "Why did I make this?" But um, I felt like I was out there for a reason, and and I had no money, and I didn't know how I was gonna survive out there the rent was like super expensive um uh, and you know to me it was just like you know i gotta listen to my heart and listen to what i want to do and what i want to be and it reads never skip a beat on the chord uh because i felt like i needed to listen to my heart and i needed to go at it 110 percent. like i'm never gonna skip a beat i'm never gonna stop going after what i what i want and and uh, yeah ever since i made this piece man it's been uh it, it's it's been a good thing you know the the first painting that i made of this this is a print but uh mm -hmm. actually uh moy b-boy moy owned it and uh someone you know someone broke into his spot and, and stole it just crazy but uh this piece has has, has had a lot of good and a lot of bad but mainly mainly good uh it's an image that's been taken i mean people in china have taken this image and like it's it's been it it, it definitely helped me grow you know and uh, it taught me a lot and art doesn't always have to be pretty you know i mean it, it just sometimes it, it's more about the message i love it man um all right well that's Donkey Boy, one of the best, one of the best there is, man. Really appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk more about your background. Getting a lot of hearts, uh, a lot of likes from people when you when you're showing that piece. Um, I love it, man. I think it ties in really well with everything you were saying, and uh, appreciate the positive message you're putting out there, man. No, oh, man. Thank you for having me, and thank you for uh, for all you that uh, tuned in. Yeah, thanks everybody. We'll uh, we'll post the full episode uh, of this on IGTV, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and The Scurf Show. Um, give it a listen. Let us know what you think. And, again, you can find Donkey Boy on Instagram at Donkey Boy, uh, D-O-N-K-E-E. -E. And uh, DonkeyBoy.com is the website, right, Alex? Yep, that's it. All right, sounds good. Thanks again for everybody for joining, and thanks again, Alex, man. Always good to talk right, to you. Peace. See you.